Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about uh, Magic the Gathering and politics. This is a issue most people are going to avoid. It's not going to be an issue you will see on Tolarian Community College, I'll put it that way. And it has impact Magic the Gathering from an ideology perspective. Wizards of the Coast has said that they are left-leaning. This, there is documentation of this. And many of its members are very, I would say, even more left leaning than the company is. So, politics and magic. This is something that you're not going to hear from many other channels. And here, here it is uh, Donald Trump is the US president. He is different from every other president in many ways. Uh, one of the probably most important ways that is under not appreciated as much is he's not, this is his first elected position, meaning he is not into politics. He probably doesn't have a good understanding of how it works, but he is the president of the United States. And no matter how many times someone tries to impeach him, He's still not impeached. So should politics mix with magic? The answer is no. Today, we have a very volatile situation uh, due to the unfortunate and very sad events in Florida with the AR-15 and that is a gun that has been used um, a lot of times for mass killing, um, especially children in school. Uh, there is the conversation of arming teachers to prevent school shootings. Worst Dyspanian movie ever. Guarantee Michael Bay would direct in case it wasn't clear, arming teachers and expecting them to engage a student is like arming your 15-year-old babysitter and expecting them to have a firefight, WTF. And from Unsleeve Media, he says, I wanted to be happy for you that you're back, but you make your grand re-entry to social media with this nuclear hot take, ugh. So Jeremy is a gun owner, and I believe he is more he is on the conservative side. And Wedge is probably not a gun owner, and he is on the liberal side. Uh, they're both very, very large six-figure subscriber bases. And it has to be talked about, right? Um, you, you have to talk about this because although they are magic content creators, they're people first, and this affects everybody. I think magic can be used as kind of a shelter from the just the constant, um, you know, the world is not a nice place. Um, I think it got a lot meaner uh, recently. And I mean that as in, you know, when you go into your local Walmart or you go to your Starbucks, people are more rude. I have found that to be true. And people are more aggressive. People are less likely to let you cut in, in line. Or So today, um, if I have one or two items, I'll let someone, or if I have lots of items and somebody behind me has one or two items, I always let them go ahead of me. Um, that's just uh, what I, I'm used to doing because I save that person a lot of time and the net gain of time for someone is actually great. Uh, the same would be if someone is having difficulty, maybe they're older, um, not as good of a driver, and they're having difficulty you know, going, I will stop and let them cut in front of me, their car. This is not true where I live. I live in one of the poorest places in America. Uh, I live in Humboldt, Texas, and I've seen a lot of big changes um, where I have been in the last few months, and you could say it's Trump, you could say it's people who support Trump, but I don't believe that. I just think the climate is very, very bad. Um, 
And it's because people are so divided and the left hates the right, the right hates the left, and there's no middle ground. So I will say this. I live in a place, um, I used to live in a place called Katy, Texas. The median income of Katy, Texas is $70,000. The... And I just saw two trucks not stop by the stoplight, and one of them is my neighbor, a stop sign, and they have kids, right? Uh, that That's how it is. Um, I mean, I just saw that right now. No one makes, a, no one stops at the stoplight right in front of my home. I can tell you that because my home office is right across the street from the stop sign, and these people with kids, you would think that they would be like, oh, hey, I, maybe I should watch out for other people's kids. They're not going to do that. That's not the climate. So back to my personal story and I wanted to I wanted to put out this I live in one of the poorest places in America my home is pretty nice it is a very nice home it is near the golf course uh, but outside my quote golf neighborhood it's very bad I always try uh, today at Walmart I saw a Indian family actually who you know they had a sign they lost their job I gave them some money and I always try to tip really well when I shop local. I shop local. I truly believe in a local economy. When I lived in Katy, the restaurants were better. The median income is about seventy or seventy-one thousand dollars median household income. Currently, where I live, I think it's thirty-six, thirty-eight thousand. So it's about half. One in five people are on below the poverty line. Um, and so out of the places that would be affected by this climate i think where i i think places that tend to be poorer are affected more and the first thing that goes is politeness uh kindness um and i'm not from here um, I'm from New York City, which is, you know, headphones in ears, go to the subway, and if someone trying to talk to you, do not talk back. And I, I liked it. When I first moved here in 2012, I really loved it. The people were super nice, uh, super helpful. You know, my if my dog got out, and one of my random neighbors, I don't even know where he lives, um, and he returned my dog. He kept the dog, returned it. I fostered lots of dogs, and... Um, I help, you know, find if there's a dog on the street when I'm walking, I will return, obviously, feed it, give it water, um, even give it a bath if it's like really muddy so I can let it in my home. And I don't put it in a cage or anything, I just let it in my home. And of course, that's bad for ticks and fleas and stuff, but, you know, it's for the dog's happiness, right? Dogs, dogs don't like to be in cages, especially if it's like a new environment. Oh, good, the car, my neighbor's car, truck is back and... Uh, I guess he's going to try to run the uh, stop sign again, <laughs> just for the F you, right? Um, my point is, we have to be nicer. Um, we have to hold doors for other people. We have to allow people with one or two items to go in front of us if we have many items. We have to allow, um, we have to smile some more. Um, when I, I take the Beltway 8, and I always, uh, on... Thursdays, um, I will pay for the person behind me. Yeah, I mean, that's just what, who I am. Um, and this, the same thing goes with people who work with me. Uh, I have always paid them on time, and that might sound like insane for you not to, but I haven't paid myself in 60, 69, 65 days. And I would rather take it out of my salary and take it out of my money than have them worry about when their student loans. I don't have student loans. I pay them all off. Um, I don't have as many. Um... Oh, good. Is that the second car that's running? Okay, great. We're just running a stop sign like all the time. You know, I, I would, I've kind of felt it interesting, and I probably shouldn't do this because the neighbors would be mad, but like my, my house is right across the street from a stop sign. I was going to put like a camera there. <laughs> like because it, it's my home still it's my property and then just record like how many times people just like blow past it and then there's lots of kids where i live so like it's not a good idea to do that yes your kids are in your minivan slash truck but what about other people's kids and that's what i'm talking about people don't want to talk about politics uh people don't want to deal with that but the reality is 
we can all be a little nicer to each other and I'm going to try my best. Um, I'm pretty, you know, I'm a pretty nice person in real life, but my persona in Magic the Gathering is that I'm very mean. And I like that actually because it, um, it allows me to, it allows me to do stuff that I want to do, but I don't do because when you have, there's nothing more rewarding than being a employer. Um, there's, you learn a lot about families, you learn a lot about even children, you don't learn when someone needs to take time off, you need to, you learn so much about uh, life, right? Because I grew up, and the reason, the way I grew up wasn't I got I, I told you about the marry situation. My significant other is we wouldn't marry each other ever because of tax purposes. Um, but we don't have kids. I don't think we ever want to have kids. Um, it's just not for us. We're very independent individuals. And I, I don't think it would work out. When you have uh, people and we have when you're an employer and you have workers that have student loans who maybe not uh, gas station cashiers or they worked at the airport, this is their only chance to make it. Um, there's no other options available to them. They're not, many of them are not educated. Many of them come from incredibly poor backgrounds. And people ask, why do I keep hiring these people who uh, don't have any skill sets? It's because I truly believe that I can train them. The one thing I cannot train, I cannot train whether or not they want to be here. I would rather have someone who wants to be here and work hard and work their ass off and believe in the creed of this company, which is to help. I, I don't take clients that I, don't, I feel uncomfortable with. Um, we've turned down plenty of clients before. I recently turned down a dentist because I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't agree with his philosophies. And I, I mean, it sounds insane that a marketing company would do that when most companies are so like, so um, they want to make every single cent. They want to scam you. And there's so many scam marketing companies. Uh, I can I explain them one. And there's a huge marketing company in California, 100, 200 employees. In nine months, the people didn't even log into the account. They were supposedly operating this Google Analytics account, but no one logged in. And only recently did they tell them, hey, uh, the password changed and we haven't logged in in nine months because the password changed nine months ago. I don't believe in that. I think that's BS. So there are times I would turn a client down and because I don't believe, you know, and we had previously two years ago, we had a huge, probably the largest uh, pit bull breeder but it was very apparent that they were breeding pit bulls to fight. And, you know, I'm such, or subtly, I guess. I, I mean, I figured it out pretty, I love dogs. And I, I said, no, I just said, no, they threw a bunch of money at us. I said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to make your website. We're not going to do your marketing. And we even had a guy who was uh, convicted of murder and he wanted us to do his online reputation. And I was like, dude, Dude, no. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Um, anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.